Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In previous videos, we talked about the characteristics of mycobacterium tuberculosis. We talked about the disease tuberculosis. Today, we'll talk about how to diagnose and how to manage tuberculosis. Now, let's get started. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order for maximum understanding and retention. Mycobacteria are immotile aerobic, non-spore-forming, gram-positive, at least anatomically, rods. But hey, medicosis, do they stain well with gram stain? No, you need an acid-fast stain. Why don't they stain well with gram stain? Thanks to the high lipid content and the mycolic acid. If you have watched the previous videos in this playlist, you know that we use the same thing, the same scheme to diagnose every organism. So first, I'll tell you about the diagnosis of tuberculosis in no particular order, and then we'll organize them into this chart. Let's go. From the previous video, who needs screening for tuberculosis? Immunocompromised patients, patients with HIV, IV drug users, homeless persons, people in prisons, nursing homes, poor communities, migrants, and healthcare workers. We have three screening tests available. Number one, TB skin test, also known as tuberculin skin test, also known as purified protein derivative test, or PPD, Manteau test, intradermal TB skin test, etc. The technique is that you inject five units of the PPD into the patient's skin, wait for about 72 hours, two to three days, so to speak, until the delayed hypersensitivity reaction takes place. When you feel an induration in the patient's skin, you're feeling a granuloma. We don't care about the redness, we care about the induration. We're looking for the granuloma. If you found big induration, boom, it's positive test. The problem with the PPD skin test is it cannot distinguish between a patient with TB and a person who received the BCG vaccination. What else do we have? We have the interferon gamma release assay. If you remember the previous videos, we talked about the granuloma formation. How do you make a granuloma? You need the T lymphocytes to stimulate the macrophages. How did the T lymphocytes stimulate the macrophages? By releasing interferon gamma. Oh! So if I take some of your blood and mix it with some TB, and I found that your blood cells are releasing interferon gamma, boom, it means that you have seen tuberculosis before. The new techniques of interferon gamma release assay do distinguish between tuberculosis patient versus someone else who has never been infected with TB, just vaccinated. And of course, chest x-ray to look for the cavitations and calcifications. How can we diagnose tuberculosis? Get a sample. Where can I get the sample? From the sputum, because the most commonly affected organ is the lungs. How do I get the sputum? From, like, coughing? Well, maybe, but better is to go deeper. Bronchoalveolar lavage. After you get your sample, use the acid-fast stain. Why is tuberculosis acid-fast? Because mycobacterium tuberculosis has mycolic acid in the cell wall, as we talked about before. And this is long-chain mycolic acid, if you remember. This acid-fast stain has many techniques, such as zeal nielsen Kinion, Fight, and the fluorescent oramine rhodamine stain. With all the others, you use good old light microscopy. But with oramine rhodamine, you need a fluorescent microscope. This fluorescent or fluorochrome technique is very sensitive. Cultures, very accurate. However, they take a long time to come back. And then we have the broth, which is faster, just two weeks instead of ten. Wow, improvement. And of course, when in doubt, look at the DNA of the stinking bacteria. We have nucleic acid probes, we have nucleic acid sequencing, protein sequencing, and don't forget the famous interferon gamma release assay, and the quantiferon gold standard test. Primary tuberculosis on chest x-ray, it's metal lobe or lower lobe, you see subpleural fibrocalcific nodule, but the second journey you see the cavitations and the apex of the lung. How about the disseminated miliary TB? It's going to be disseminated all over the place. Now let's organize it in the famous chart. Microscopy, get me the sample from the patient's sputum or better, dig deeper, bronchoalveolar lavage. What acid fast stains do we have? We have the carbophosin, including zeal nielsen and Kinion method. We have phyte, we have the oramine rhodamine, also known as turant fluorochrome, the most sensitive microscopic technique. 
With all of these, light microscopy. With this one, fluorescent microscopy. The TB bacilli will shine under the microscope. Culture, morning respiratory specimen for three or more consecutive days. If you find tuberculosis, you have confirmed the diagnosis. And boy, do I have a crazy story about this one. Disclaimer, I did not experience it firsthand. Instead, a pathologist that I trust told me the story. Back in the good old days, which were not so good, in Egypt, tuberculosis was very common. It was extremely prevalent to the point that the government built hospitals just to treat tuberculosis alone. They were known as TB hospitals. At one of these hospitals, the security guard wanted to make an extra buck. And being the security guard of a tuberculosis hospital, he contracted tuberculosis. He said, hmm, let me think about that. Patients who are admitted to the hospital are isolated for days, if not months. They get free room and board and free medical care. So he went to the streets and brought some relatives that did not have tuberculosis. And he used to spit his own saliva into their samples to make it turn positive for tuberculosis. Since these people, who did not have tuberculosis, tested positive for tuberculosis, they were admitted to the hospital. And this went on and on and on until some doctor, who had a brain, started to think. What's going on here? All of these people that are coming recently have a positive test result, but they have no symptoms whatsoever, their chest x-rays are clean, and my stethoscope cannot pick up anything off their chest, not even an abnormal eronchus. So he kept an eye on them until he discovered that the security guard was spitting into their samples. And of course, he will not spit into your sample until you bribe him. To be honest, when I first heard the story, I thought it was made up. Until I read Basic Economics by Dr. Thomas Sowell, then I realized it's not peculiar to Egypt and it's not peculiar to tuberculosis. It has happened in many countries all over the world in many parts and times of history. As Will Durant said, quote, nothing is new but arrangement, close quote. Back to tuberculosis. What kind of medium should I use to culture? We have egg-based media, such as Lovenstein Jensen. The results will come back in four or more weeks. We have agar-based media, such as Middlebrook. Also, the results are available in four or more weeks. And we have the broth fluid liquid culture. The results will come back faster. Two weeks. Okay, Medicosis, all of this lovely acid fast thing told me that this is mycobacteria, but it did not confirm mycobacterium tuberculosis versus other mycobacteria. Well, if you want to know for sure that this is mycobacterium tuberculosis, do the nucleic acid amplification test or use your clinical sense honestly and look at the chest x-rays. Next, identification techniques. There are species, tuberculosis, specific nuclear probes, sequencing techniques. There are genomic sequences, protein sequences, mass spectrometry, etc. And we've talked about this before in my video about Nocardi. The same technique was used. Detection, you have the PPD skin test to detect the granuloma or the induration. We have the interferon gamma release assay, the quantiferone, and molecular probes. Prognosis, if your immunity is strong and the disease is local, you have good prognosis. If your immunity is poor and the disease is all over the place, miliary tuberculosis, the diagnosis is poor. Until very recently, it was estimated that about one third of the world population have had T be at a certain point in their lives. Okay, Medicosis, how can we treat this stupid thing? Do not wait for the stupid test. If you suspect it clinically and you have the positive PPD skin test, go ahead and start treatment. Or if there are risk factors and positive interferon gamma release assay, go ahead and start treatment. Let's talk about the anti-tuberculosis medications. Here is the mycobacteria. Here is mycobacterium tuberculosis. We have a cell wall, we have a cell membrane, and we have DNA. Let's inhibit the synthesis of the mycolic acid in the cell wall. Welcome isoniazid. Let me inhibit arabinozyl transferase, which will inhibit the formation of arabinogalactan in the cell wall of mycobacterium tuberculosis. Welcome ethambutol. Or if you want to inhibit this DNA-dependent RNA polymerase, you can use rifampin. The anti-tuberculosis medications. These are the most common ones. If they do not work, you can try others. Let's talk about the famous four. Isoniazid, rifampin, pyrazinamide, ethambutol. 
students use the acronym RIPE, rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, ethambutol. If you need more help, streptomycin, the famous ami, no, glycoside, ami, no, nephrotoxic, ototoxic. And guess what? Levofloxacin has entered the chat. Hemicosis, the patient does not have active TB. The patient has latent TB. Why are we treating? To decrease the risk of reactivation of tuberculosis. I want to eradicate the TB. How do you do this? Isonize it for nine months or isonize it and rifampin for three months or rifampin daily for four months. The famous four are here, rifampin, isonized, pyrazinamide, ethambutol. In the first two months of treatment, take all of them. In the next four months, take two drugs, the famous two, isonized and rifampin. Hey, medicosis, what's the most common cause of failure of treatment of tuberculosis? Non-compliance. Have you ever tried taking a medication for six freaking months? Have you ever tried any new habit for six consecutive months? It is very difficult. Just try it and you will have compassion for your patients in no time. Isoniazid side effects include vitamin B6 deficiency, oh, neuropathy, seizure, sideroblastic anemia. How do I do that? How, how can I prevent this? Whenever you give isoniazid, give vitamin B6 with it. It can also lead to high anion gap metabolic acidosis, drug-induced lupus, and liver toxicity. As for rifampin, it starts with an R. It inhibits RNA polymerase with an R. Side effects include red to orange color, not just of your urine, of any bodily fluid. Rifampin with an R will ramp up the P450 enzyme system in the liver, boosting the metabolism of other drugs, rendering them less effective. And since it affects the liver enzyme system, guess what? It can lead to liver toxicity. Next, pyrazinamide. Side effects include hyperuricemia and liver toxicity. Try not to use in pregnancy. Ethambutol. Well, ethambutol with the E causes eye problem with the E. Such as red-green color blindness and decreased visual acuity. On the bright side, it is not that hepatotoxic. Streptomycin, the famous ME, no glycoside, is nephrotoxic and ototoxic and do not use in pregnancy. More about streptomycin. Again, nephrotoxic, ototoxic. It is only used today against two organisms. Number one, tuberculosis. Number two, Yersinia pestis, the freaking plague. I did not mean exactly two. I meant two famous ones. Of course, it can be used with other infectious diseases. Even in tuberculosis, it's not used in every case of tuberculosis only in two specific instances, the drug-resistant tuberculosis strain and patients who cannot tolerate rifampin, isoniazid, pyrazinamide, or ethambutol. Some medicosis pearls for the pros. If the patient has HIV and tuberculosis and you're giving the patient a protease inhibitor for HIV, do not give rifampin for tuberculosis because there is a drug-drug interaction with the protease inhibitors. Instead, give rifabutin. How is rifapentin different from rifabutin and rifampin? Rifapentin has the penta in it. Just remember five, like lots of numbers. Long half-life. One dose every five days, I mean a week. Let's review mycobacterium tuberculosis disease from Picmonic. Mycobacterium tuberculosis. Myco, here's the mic. Bacteria, TB. TV. Symptoms include fever, here's the beaver, night sweats, weight loss, and hemoptysis. All of these were constitutional general symptoms. When they happen in leukemias and lymphomas, we call them B-cell symptoms. And then we have extra pulmonary tuberculosis outside your lungs, such as Addison disease, add sun, say goodbye to your adrenal glands, CNS problems, abscess, meningitis, encephalitis, you name it. Tuberculosis can infect your liver, your kidneys, your GI tract, your bones, don't forget pot disease, which is TB vertebral osteomyelitis. When you have tuberculosis all over the body, what do we call it? Miliary TB. If you want to learn more about rifampin, isoniazid, ethambutol, pyrazinamide, and other antibacterials, antivirals, antiparasitic, and antifungal medications, download my antibiotics course at medicosisperfectionalis.com. I also have an endocrine pharmacology course to teach you about oral hypoglycemic agents, insulin, thyroid hormone, and others.
Coming up next is a quick review, then leprosy. So please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfectionalis, where medicine makes perfect sense.